Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Week Ahead video with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst. And the week ahead we're looking to is Monday the 11th of December until Friday the 15th of December. And today's video has been recorded on Thursday the 7th of December and the time has just gone 12.15pm UK time. It's such actually a busy week in terms of corporate and economic updates. I will actually just be, be, going, be, be bypassing Monday and going straight to Tuesday seeing as we have so many events to discuss. On Tuesday morning, uh, we have the UK CPI rate out. Bearing in mind, the last, most, the most recent reading of UK inflation is it was a reading of 3%. And the Bank of England have a target of 2%. And if, it, if the reading exceeds 3%, takes up to 3.1%, the governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, about to write a letter to the, chan the British Chancellor, Philip Hammond, to explain why inflation ha has ticked up. A lot of the inflation on the, uh, in the UK has been going through in 2017 has actually been down to a weakness in the British pound and import inflation rather than an actual genuine increase in demand. Looking ahead to Wednesday, keeping with the UK team, uh, we have the UK unemployment rate, which is currently at 4.3%, and, and we also have the uh, average UK earnings for the past three months. And, that is the, and the most recent rating of that came in at 2.2%. So the decline in unemployment over the last number of years in the UK has been something politicians have been happy to brag about, but wage growth has been very much standing still. And it's only when we actually see a decent pickup in, in earnings and in turn spending, we actually see that the pound actually kind of manage to push on higher from here. Uh, lunchtime on Wednesday, we have the U US CPI uh, reading, the inflation reading. It is, and it's expected to come in at 2% in line with the Federal Reserve's target. Uh, speaking of the Federal Reserve, we, we have the last update from the Federal Reserve of 2017. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve is widely expected to rate to increase interest rates by 0.25% to 1.5% uh, on the evening of Wednesday. It's going to be um, the, the statement that, 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 that will follow the update is going to be closely watched, seeing as traders have been widely anticipating this rate hike from the Federal Reserve for the last couple of months now. The, the makeup of the Federal Reserve is going to be changing a lot in the next number of weeks and months. We already have two new appointments to the Federal Reserve. And on top of that, Janet Yellen is going to be stepping down in February. And she is going to be replaced by Jerome Powell, Jay Powell, who is quite neutral when it comes to interest rates. We also have a couple, of, at least, we also have a couple more uh, appointments to be made in the next coming weeks and months to the Federal Reserve. So, we're, so the statement on, on, on Wednesday will be of, of, of high importance, but also it, it, to some extent it will be of low importance because we don't know what the, the makeup of the Federal Reserve is going to be uh, in, 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 for 2018 until a few months' time. Turning our attention to Thursday, uh, we have some updates from China overnight. We have retail sales, industrial production, and we also have the uh, fixed asset investment figure. Uh, the general theme for the last few months has been that China is continuing to grow, but is growing at a slow rate. And that slowdown has kind of put, put some pressure on some of the, some of the mining, some of the minerals, such as, such as high-grade copper, and in turn, some of the mining stocks like Rio Tinto, Beachy Billiton, Antofagasta, and uh, Anglo America, and so on. And these companies, of course, uh, some of these co companies are components and, and constituents of the FTSE 100, so we could see a bit of a downward pressure on the FTSE on the back of that, depending how the figures come in. On Thursday, we have a couple of updates from central banks. At 12 o'clock high noon, we have the update from the Bank of England. Uh, it's going to be a fairly uneventful uh, uh, event, I would, I would imagine, seeing as we had an interest rate hike from the Bank of England only last month. It was a very dovish hike, and it was a reset of the interest rate cut that we saw in August 2016. And, and, the, and the statement that followed last month could have been more dovish if Admar Carney tried. So I suspect we're going to see much. We're going to see no great surprises from the Bank of England on Thursday coming. At 12:45, we'll have the we have the update from the European Central Bank. No change is expected in relation to their actual monetary policy, but the press conference that follows is going to be of importance. Bearing in mind the most recent reading of eurozone inflation ticked up to 1.5% from 1.4%, but the forecast was which analysts were expecting a reading of 1.6%. So it did come in below expectations, and in, and relatively weak inflation has been something that Mario Draghi, the president of the ECB, has been concerned about for a number of months now. When we take over to 2018, the, the size of the European Central Bank's uh, bond buying scheme is going to reduce to 30 billion euros per month for the for the uh, for nine months until September 2018. So any updates, uh, uh, we, should we see inflation remain 
continue to remain stubbornly low within the eurozone, it could be a sign that we could see further or extension of easing from the ECB. On Thursday, we also have the European Council Summit, uh, which takes place across Thursday and Friday. So the, the EU summit is also uh, going, to be, going, to be, going to be of importance at the back end of last week, especially if we consider Brexit negotiations are going on. In terms of corporate updates for next week, on Tuesday, the 12th of December, we have first half figures out from Ashtad, and on Wednesday, the 13th of December, we have first half figures out from Dixon's Carphone. I quickly run through some of the, of, the, of the major markets which could be impacted ne next week. So the first one we'll, we'll have a look at is the is cable, the British pound versus the US dollar. Cable, since the lows of, Mar of May of, of March rather, has been in a fairly solid upward trend versus the US dollar. But notice how uh, we, ha we have seen a decent enough sell-off uh, given the uncertainty surrounding Brexit and the Irish border. But, the, but by and large, the overall theme is to the upside when it comes to the pound versus the US dollar. If you do see any dips lower, we could see it heading back to, down towards this trend line uh, and also which, which coincides with a 50-day moving average in around the kind of 132.50 region. But we have seen buyers en enter the fold in the past. We have seen pullbacks in the pound versus the US dollar. So that we, we could also see a repeat of that should you move lower in, on the British pound. If you do happen to push higher on cable, um, one potential level to watch out for to the upside will be 135.48, uh, the most recent high, and then beyond that, up towards 136.59, which was the September high. Mm -hmm. A quick look now at the euro versus the US dollar, as we have a couple of uh, central bank updates from, from, from both, from both uh, organizations. So taking a look at the euro, it's had a very decent run throughout, throughout the summer of 2017. We sold off in a bit of the autumn, and now we appear to be pushing higher yet again. Uh, even though we have seen a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a pullback recently in the euro versus US dollar, it may find support in around the 50-day moving average in around the kind of 117-60 region. Or if we move south of that, we could find support in around the kind of 117 area. Should the euro continue the upward trend that has been in for uh, for largely speaking 2017, the next next big level to watch out for to the upside will be the 120 region. And if we, if we go beyond 120, we could be looking towards the September high of 120.92. Taking a look now at the FTSE 100, as I mentioned, we have a couple of updates from the uh, from the UK next week. Any movements in the, in the British pound could have a big impact in the on the FTSE 100. But if you notice that the FTSE uh, has been in, in, in fairly obvious decline since uh, over the last five or six weeks, since, since early November, you had a fairly obvious lower low and a lower high, followed by another lower low. So the, and we're, we're currently below the 30 moving average on the FTSE 100, which comes into play at 7,400. So while we remain south of that metric, the, out, the outlook for the FTSE 100 could remain negative. So should we move lower yet again on the FTSE 100, we could be looking ahead and down, back down towards the November, the, the December low of 7,278. And if you go below that, have a look, keep keep your eye out on the September low of 7,195. And if you go south of that. Keep an eye out for the April low of 7,088. Pushes higher on the FTSE 100, may encounter resistance at 7,472, the late November high. And if, and if you go up north of that, we could be looking to target 7,600. I'll have a quick look now at the Dow Jones before we wrap, wrap, wrap up the video. So after creating yet another record high, uh, only at the beginning of this week, the Dow Jones has appeared to kind of pull back a, a small bit, giving up some of its gains. But seeing as we've had a lot of buying on the dip in the last number of months, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold. Should we continue to push lower on the Dow Jones, we may find support in around the psychological number of, 12, of 24,000, or even maybe perhaps down as low as 23,891. But the wider trend for the Dow Jones has been very much to the upside, so if we do push higher, we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs of 24,535. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very, thank you very much. Have a good trading week, and good luck.